Um, I'm here to talk to you about the hype in hyperlocal, something, an industry that has actually transformed the way urban Indians live, eat, you know, commute, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to have a look under the hood to maybe a little, explain a little bit about what is it that makes this machine work. It is an incredible machine powered by incredible young men and women, and I thought it'd be good in a technology campus to talk about the technology and the processes behind this amazing machine. Uh, the, the theme that I'm choosing, and again, I'm speaking to a young audience, is the famous 10-year challenge. And so I'm going to do a rewind back 10 years and then fade back to here and talk a little bit about how that has come to life. So this is a 10-year trend, and like with any Google trend, you can see that there has been no movement for the majority of the 10 years. There was a little bit of a movement in the beginning, and then after that, it's flat, and then it's skyrocketed. So what is the trend here? The trend here is hyperlocal, hyperlocal deliveries. But before we get to that trend, let's think a little bit about the physical world 10 years ago, say 2009. We were ordering things at home. We were ordering groceries. We were ordering food. It wasn't that the food ordering or the grocery ordering process was non-existent. But the process was as follows. You would go to a restaurant, get a takeout menu, or know the phone number of the neighborhood grocery store, and you would have his number with you. Then you'd make a phone call, and then you would describe the order, and hopefully if the order was there, it would come, maybe in an hour. That's okay for a bag of atta, not necessarily true for hot chapatis. The searches for near me and near me now, which is really what this trend is, is what this Google Trends is showing, and you can see how it was practically flat, and now it's just become a, a, an exponential event. And this is the trend that I'm trying to get into and go through the digital world and explain to you all here. So what is hyperlocal delivery anyway? The hyperlocal delivery is a, a, a phase which is something which is happening very close to you and it's happening in real time. So let's see the digital world in 2009. In 2009, it had already been five years since Facebook. It had been two years since Flipkart had started. Ola and Uber didn't exist in India and that was the world. So in 2009, you could connect to a friend who was living 10,000 kilometers away. You could get books from a place which is 1,000 kilometers away, but you couldn't get food, medicines, or grocery even from one kilometer away in a reliable fashion, and that was 2009. Now fast forward to 2013, and these are the trends that all of us living in this vibrant country have seen. We were power users of WhatsApp, we still are, uh, Amazon and Flipkart had started same-day delivery, and hyperlocal grocery delivery had started happening. In 2016, there were two events that actually made this, this graph work harder, which was data became super affordable via Geo and Airtel. And here's an interesting anecdote there. Mobile data, India was number 120th in the list of countries when it came to both penetration and cost. After this explosion of Geo and Airtel, India skyrocketed to the top five in the world in this less than 12 months on how many people in India and how much data they were consuming. And add to that, there was mobile payments that was caused by demonetization and the Paytm effect or the mobile wallets effect. So effectively, if you think about it, like a game of Tetris where everything sort of seems to fall in place, all of these things conspired to make the perfect place for hyperlocal delivery along with the payment ecosystem happen. The other thing which also happened is the demographic trend. I mean, India is a very, very young country, and it's a young digital country of people on the move. Many people were living away from, from their parents. They were living away in different cities, and therefore they, they needed the convenience of being able to manage their homes while still staying in their homes. And so back then, while we wanted hyperlocal delivery, today we needed it, and we needed it now. The whole impatience, I'm, I need my food and I need it now, is another trend that actually happened. Now to make this, this trend happen, 
while it seems simple on the surface, what needs to be true is that there is a three-way marketplace that the intelligent brain that's inside needs to handle. And therefore, because it's a three-way marketplace, it requires 3x the challenge, not just computational challenge, but 3x the people challenges and 3x the process challenges. So the three coordinations are between the customer, which is largely you, the restaurants, and the delivery executives. So this is the look under the hood that I'm going to try to explain to you here. So now that we know what hyperlocal delivery is, these are the three actors. This is essentially the best way to describe it, is that it's a synchronized dance between three actors. There's the customer, there is the restaurant, and there's the delivery executive. So let's start the first place, which is usually in the living room. Most of the deliveries are at home, and it's in the living room of a house. And what's happening? The, the clock hasn't started ticking yet, but the consumer has opened the app, and they're starting to find restaurants. So two things need to be true. You must find restaurants that are open, and you must find restaurants, or you must be provided restaurants that are less than four kilometers away. And so there's a whole algorithm that's going, and going around to make those things appear on the screen. And they, based on the time of the day and the type of the restaurant and all of that, it's also calculating the estimated delivery times for each restaurant because most consumers would want to know how long it's going to take. And not only that, they have to be ordered in a certain way that is unique to you. So if you're a regular user, of a food delivery platform, there will be a first sort of major algorithm that's in place, which is called listing logic, which is a unique fingerprint of exactly the list of restaurants that are listed in the order that is unique to you on the basis of a combination of factors. How good is the restaurant? How, like, how, how much do you like that kind of food? How far are you from it? And a host of other factors. So it's literally a very unique code of, of restaurants for each one of the consumers that's out there. So it requires incredible real-time computational work to make it happen to tens of millions of consumers in tens of millions of man-hours every day. The second thing then starts happening is that the restaurant is the consumer places the order. Now, when the consumer has placed the order, two things are happening in parallel. The, the restaurant is getting the order, and the restaurant has to choose whether to accept the order, and if to accept the order in the, in the right way to kind of suggest changes if there is a particular dish that needs to be changed, and if everything is good, then to start preparing that food. Parallelly, what's happening is that the delivery fleet is now starting to get involved in it. Now, there are hundreds, uh, or there are actually thousands of delivery fleets or tens of thousands of delivery fleets in one of our major cities. I'm sure you see them when you travel. And they are either, they're in three states. They're either going to pick up an order from a restaurant, or they are picked up the food and they're en route to delivering the food to the consumer, or they are just waiting because they've finished the previous delivery and they're waiting for an order. So the, there's another algorithm that needs to be coming in place, and again, this is incredibly high intensity and high complexity algorithm that is called the assignment logic, which is to figure out who to assign that order to. And that again depends on a unique set of conditions. Where is the delivery executive? Where is the consumer? Where is the restaurant? And it has to be assigned to that right delivery executive. And the delivery executive then he accepts. He then goes to the restaurant and what is called the first mile, which is the time, which is the amount of distance that he travels from where he is to the restaurant. Typically, then he has to wait for the food to get ready because the restaurant is it typically takes about 15 minutes to, to make the food. So there's about five to seven minutes of drive time to the restaurant and then about five to 10 minutes, depending on the food, of what is called the wait time. And once the, the food is picked up, then begins this, this journey, which is called the last mile, or the mile between the restaurant and the, rest, and the, and the home of the consumer. That last mile is what is typically 15 minutes, but it requires tremendous amounts of algorithms, again, real time, which is route optimization. Right? So obviously you have real-time traffic information out there. You also have real-time information out there of any blockages that are there because of a construction going on or, or some other problem that is there. And on that basis then, the delivery executive is assigned something called an optimized route where he or she has to take his two-wheeler and reach the restaurants, uh, reach the destination. Now that destination is essentially what is called the last mile. But as most of us know, there is a journey to be had even after you've reached 
the, the gate of the buildings that we live in or the, or the gate of the societies that we live in, which is called the last, last mile. So while the last mile takes about 15 minutes, the average for, for the country is that it takes another two and a half minutes to go from either the, the guardhouse or the main gate or the initial entry barrier onto the door of the consumer because food has to be delivered to the door of that consumer. Again, that we are finding ways to optimize that and reduce that so that the consumer can get the food faster. So this last, last mile is, is today two and a half minutes is when the consumer finally gets the food that she or he has ordered. So the total of everything that we do is this diagram that you can see, but it tells you at each stage which is the algorithm that's in place. It tells you what's going on behind the scenes and it tells you how many minutes it takes. So today, there are 30 million consumers in this country who are doing this day in, day out. There are 100,000 plus restaurants who are participating in this dance, as we call it, the three-way dance every day. And there are 300,000 or above delivery executives across the industry who are actually participating as the third main actors in this dance to try to make sure that food is delivered on time, largely reliably, and, and a, a hot meal for a person who's just spent a hard day at work or a hard day at school or just, or just wanting to relax and not have to cook that day. And this is essentially what goes on behind the scenes to make what seems like a simple enough thing that was possible technically 10 years ago, but happen with such amazing precision and amazing sort of accuracy. Now, while this is a super hyper-local sort of thing, I have to say that the benefits of this technology are not just for hyper-local delivery. It can do interesting things. Like today, for example, I'm here in Hyderabad, and, my and we had a family occasion. So I decided that, look, I'm going to use the service that we have. So just before I came on to stage, I said, look, I I'm missing a family sort of occasion. Let me try to make it up to my wife and kids by sending something nice to them. So I ordered something before I came on. Now I know, because I, I, I'm part of this industry, on what the hacks are. So I ordered at a time which is not peak. This is not a peak time yet. I ordered in an area where I know the restaurant will deliver quickly. I ordered a dish that doesn't take too, long time, too much time to cook because it's a ready-made sweet. And basically I placed the order. So I'm pretty confident that although my phone is not with me right now, by the time I go back there, there'll be an order delivered to my wife uh, that I go back in, which is 18 minutes from the time I came on stage. So I wanted to thank you for calling me here, but I wanted to also thank you for allowing me to explain what's going behind the scenes of this incredible new technology and processes that are transforming urban lives uh, of cities around the world today. Thank you.